你说什么 ？China 是中国。你最喜欢的国家吗？那你最讨厌的国呢？这么讨厌啊？为什么呢？因为他臭美，人常说知道，南京大厨张我当然也知道，我都会历史。这么厉害？那你长大了想干什么呢？想杀日本人，想杀美国人。好，回去吧，坐着吧。From the youngest age,、mm. children are taught pretty much to hate、mm. in China, to hate the outside, to hate certain types of people. Right. Okay, and、um, It's something very different to the way you and I grew up,、um, right? And most people in the West, because this level of hate never enters the the local sort of society. Right. It just doesn't. We're not taught. I was not taught as a as a young person to hate a specific type of person.、Mm. You know, even though I grew up in South Africa,、mm. we would think that you would be. But that's not the case because we have a very liberal sort of Western、uh, right. education system and all that kind of stuff. We're taught、mm. to. You know, love everybody and you know respect、Everyone's、other equal, people,、yeah. respect different cultures, look after different cultures. We're never told like X, Y, Z people you must hate them because they're bad and、right. you know all that kind of nonsense. So let's start out with、uh, some of the things that some of us. Yeah, would have seen. actually, I wanted to say like we don't want to dive into this. Like we are going to dive into the hate culture thing, but、yeah. we want to look at like how we grew up first, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah, so we're going to play a little clip. Maybe、uh, some of you will recognize this. I, I certainly will from when I was young. There are times when everybody dreams of becoming very rich or powerful, but what they don't think about are the problems and responsibilities that go with it. In today's story, He Man was tested, and he proved his worth when he was able to resist the temptation to use his great power for any selfish gain. He knew. That it's just as important to know when not to use force as it is to know when to use it. Cool. Can we pause it there? Dude, how did He Man back then already know about Xi Jinping? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is weird. It's a very relevant、it? choice, Winston. Yeah, it's good. Well, you know, the thing is, I remember very clearly when I was young. He Man was one of the big,、uh, big cartoons of my generation. Sure. Right. And they had to have these sort of PSAs at the end、yeah. of every cartoon. But I remember I was always teaching you about friendship. Teaching you how to share,、um, you know, how to watch out for danger, things like that, and these are these are good sort of morals and things to instill in younger children. And you know, I I always, in my mind anyway, I thought around the whole world, this is kind of what、sure. people were taught, like、right. children. So let's move on to one from your generation. Yeah, this is mine. My yeah. What if the teacher is the one that's touching you? Exactly. Probably don't want to tell him about it. <laughs> no, you don't.、Um, now the reason、yeah. I I chose that is meme worthy as that is. Um, and cringy and '90s garbage. It's a, a useful message、yeah. for children, right? So like, they're actually coming out of this with like some positive knowledge about maybe someone's trying to do something nasty to you, right?、Yeah. It's educational. Sure. Whereas the stuff that we're gonna cover a little bit later from the Chinese stuff, there's there's no moral message to to take out of that. No, the only sort of moral message that's pushed is love the government, right? Love the country, no、that's, matter what. Yeah, no matter what. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And、anyway. this is where the yeah the comparisons stem from. Yeah.、Um, we have one more. I think、yeah. we both because we both watched Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Let's roll that clip.、So、one of my favorites growing up. Me too. Bad guys. We've been all over South America, and there's no sign of Shredder. Then who caused all this damage to the rainforest? Unfortunately, people did. Hundreds of acres of the world's rainforest are being destroyed every day. But all those trees and plants in the rainforest produce much of the world's oxygen, and we need oxygen to breathe.、Mm. I don't know about you, dudes, but I'm gonna start holding my breath. <laughs> He's always my favorite. <laughs> Calabunga. <laughs> Uh, yeah, An another useful <laughs> message, though.、Yeah. I mean, I don't know what kids are going to do to save the rainforest, but it might raise some awareness for charities and things like well, that. Well, no, the thing is, it's it's teaching children to protect the environment and、sure. to think about the environment. That's something you you never see in China, right? You know. Well, you you know what you see? What PSA is just promoting what the government is doing to help, not、yeah. like what you need to do to help. It's like what we are doing to smash pollution and yeah, that's absolutely problems, right. Yeah. yeah, the thing is. The reason why we chose these sort of like '80s and '90s cartoons is we grew up with that. It's just to show that there, there's always some kind of a positive message,、mm. like to help people improve、mm. or to understand life or to be good. And feel good and to do good. Right. As right. an individual. Yes. That's、yeah. the difference. Absolutely. Maybe the kids can help. Yeah. What are some of the things that make you feel better when you're feeling sad? Like, make me laugh or something like that. 
So the reason I chose that, this is a show called Storybots, and I wanted to see what kids' shows are like today, because everyone's like, man, kids are getting garbage. You, you know, you've, you've got a young daughter. My you daughter watch, watches yeah, this show, yeah. and they have like Jay Leno on there, Weird Al Yankovic, oh, like cool. all these cool people, right? And they right. there's always a message. They either learn about something, learn about, um, what's it called, like how cells work, or different science things, or how to share, or how to deal with other people's feelings, and things like that, right? So my point of, my point of this is like, Today, still, kids are getting positive messages from Western cartoons and Western okay. So... This is kind of a little music video here. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing is these cute little cartoon rabbits. Mm -hmm. But we can clearly see the Nationalist Party. Um, and the current ruling party of Taiwan. Yeah. And the Communist Party basically shoot. Well, they're shooting. The, the cute cartoon rabbits are like basically attacking the other ones. And yeah. Tell, like, tell me about that magical star he got in his hand. Well, it turned him into a communist. I thought it turned him into a demon. Yeah, he looks like a, I will genocide you now. Yeah, that's like such negative imagery. And there's weapons and there's fighting in this. And this yeah. is this is, this is is what we're tipping, tipping our toes and dipping our toes into right here is this is the kind of educational, educational material that Chinese have to consume Chinese kids. Yeah, right? yeah. It does really um, bother me that like young children, because this is obviously aimed at very young very children. Young, yeah. Um, are subject to this kind of imagery right so from a very young age and the thing is we've got a lot of anecdotes that we're going to be talking about later mm. having taught kids both of us before back in the past yeah um, you know we it just it reflects you see how they they come to class and they pretend to be killing the Japanese and they sure. pretend to be like you know the PLA and stuff in, I remember in a bad like way. whenever like before I'd come into class or whatever the kids would be like picking on one kid and they'd yeah. be like calling him the little Japanese ghost and he yeah. th it's like the nerdy kid or whatever he always get picked sure. on I don't know it's kind of I think it's kind of cool to be a Japanese ghost sure it's pretty badass like a JRPG thing so yeah they look so evil they do they look absolutely terrible this is not good for kids um, yeah. the thing is you see this kind of show on TV every day in China but it's live action yeah and this is just like a cartoonized cute version of the same thing you think they'd vary the material a little bit more but they no. don't because like you have those fantastical war drums we talk about these all the time one yeah. Chinese soldier kills a billion Japanese people yeah. they're always like these Whoa's. yeah like little oh. bearded yeah. nerdy guys with tripping little over tables glasses and, yeah I know <laughs> yeah. yeah so at the oh, end of this yeah. pause, pause it there they've got imagery here from the long march right mm. um, which is you know a big part of the communi communi yeah communist history <laughs> okay so i don't think that's derogatory <laughs> <laughs> yeah so let's continue on uh yeah so basically this video rounds out with them reminiscing over the achievements of china and a lot of them are super politically charged yeah um and some some of them i wouldn't really call achievements sure you know like they they have the handover of hong kong as one of their achievements here right um there they are shooting the evil japanese chicken is that a chicken he's a chicken like what's that and that's the, like a the pla you know with their tanks and looking all mean and oh stuff. okay and like he's got the, the commie stars in his eyes and i mean the art quality is actually pretty good yeah and he's, he's eating a this is a white rabbit candy those are very popular in china those are awesome did he just eat the wrapper no i think okay. he ate the sweet all right Anyway, they're showing like the inventiveness, I guess, of the white rabbit manufacturing or something. I don't really know what's going on there. <laughs> they're spending a lot of time. Maybe it's a white rabbit plug. That'd be really quite. It's like a milk candy. There's a handover. There's a 1998 earthquake thing where they um, made a big thing of the PLA helping out right. the earthquake victims. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, there's the Shanghai Expo thing. And, uh, you know, they're just showing, showcasing all these great achievements. Sure. Um, the handover wasn't an achievement it was just like no it was an agreement that was finally reached you know reached its thing yeah they really love that though yeah they love this like rescue of the can earthquake. you pause it for a second yeah. i have a little beef with yeah. that um mm -hmm. the whole so if you guys don't know a bazillions of people died in the sitchuan earthquake it was, in ridiculous. It was like 300,000 like, or something no, ridiculous? 800 was it 800 i think yeah. it could have been as high as 800,000 so, so. long story short it was a devastating earthquake a yeah. lot of people died due to poor building construction right yeah. and number two they covered it up so no one was allowed to to be like send help because china didn't know what to do to like oh we can't have the world find out about this and the, the biggest reason that they blocked all news about this earthquake 
is because of something called the Mandate of Heaven. Mm -hmm. So in traditional Chinese culture, if some massive natural disaster happens, it means it's time for the leadership to change. Right. So that was like kind of why that happened. But why are they celebrating that when they when they made it happen? Well, you know, here's the thing. I remember, I remember when that happened because mm -hmm. I was in China when that yeah. happened, and uh, there were a lot of good things that came from it. Yeah. Um, in the end, as far as unity of the nation is yeah. concerned, and that was really cool. But it was, everyone was like, you know, they they, they had these mascots mm. because it was 2008, the Beijing Olympics, right? right? That was their big thing. And they oh, had these, so these really weird looking little mascots, right? And people were telling me that those are cursed like devils because they <laughs> caused the Sichuan earthquake. And there was another big thing that happened in 2008. I can't even remember what it was, but there was some other kind of disaster or something bad. Uh, was that maybe the milk powder thing? Or, maybe, yeah. Or maybe, well, whatever. Same time period. There, there were two big things mm. that happened in 2008, the massive Sichuan, Sichuan earthquake being one of them. So they were saying it's the evil mascots that they're a curse. Right. Um, anyway, the thing is, this, this horrendous, horrendous earthquake killed so many people because... You had children studying in class. The buildings just collapsed on them. Very poor Concrete. construction yeah. quality. It turns out that like none of them were built properly. No. So then you've got the PLA came in to help, which is what they should do, you know. But it's constantly used as a positive propaganda for the yeah. PLA. It's I, like, look. I actually did a piece about that mm -hmm. in my university class, and yeah. we were talking because it was the whole uh, uh, whole curriculum was about like social media. Ironically, you'd never be able to teach about that now. Yeah. But I covered that, and I was like, kind of asking them like, what do you think about the relief efforts for uh, mm -hmm. the Sichuan earthquake? Because so much money was squandered and these fake yeah. charities and yeah. stuff within China. People were really salty about it. Mm. And I remember, but the rhetoric changed a couple years later, and they're like, it was a heroic thing that the PLA stepped in there and helped all these people out. And they're, they're, they, instead of pointing the finger at the government, being like, why did you allow this building quality to happen, and why did you, you censor all results about mm -hmm. the, the earthquake? Instead of that, which was kind of happening in the beginning, it moved over, and they're like, yeah. no, that was good. That, that's what brought our country together. It's like, what? Yeah, no, there, look, there was a lot of nonsense that happened during that time. I remember, like, a very experienced uh, disaster relief, a Japanese disaster relief company wanted to come over to help mm. because they have a lot of experience because of all the tsunamis oh, yeah. and all the earthquakes in Japan. Yeah. But China wouldn't let them because then they would lose face, right. letting J Japan help them. I remember that being like I was shocked by that. Yeah. But on top of that, there was a lot of help from everybody. Like yeah. all different walks of life, people went to help. It was a big heroic effort. And, you know, besides all that crappy political stuff, it did really bring everybody together trying to help the Fair survivors enough, but it could have victims. been it could have been prevented if you didn't allow tofu buildings and massive yes. construction bribery projects yeah, to go. Ab absolutely. But, you know, one thing that really disgusted me the most out of all of this, to be honest, was... Um, Everybody virtue signal, signaling, mm. okay? And the company I worked for is when I was working for that rapist. Right. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, um, I'm not laughing about that part. It's just that, that, that job guy. was hilarious. It, anyway, so I was working for this this big company, um, Shan Mu Peixin, mm. and uh, the leader of the company thought that it would be a great time to, you know, virtue signal. Mm. So he got all the foreign teachers to line up in a like a row. He got a big donation box that had written on the side there, Sichuan, Sichuan Earthquake Donation. Um, and he got us all standing there, like fanning out the money. He came and he put like about 500 RMB in everybody's hands. He said, okay, you stand there, he put 500. And then he had him at the front, like pretending to put the money in to the box and we're all lined up. So it's like, okay, we're all gonna be putting the money right. in. They took the photo and he took all the money back and yeah. then walked out. Do you know how often this gets caught on tape? These yeah. government officials line up and they put the money in and then they clear the box out and they're done. It was just like, to me, it was the most dishonest, horrible thing. I felt so bad. I ended up actually donating a huge portion of my right. salary to the Sichuan Earthquake Hopefully Fund. Hopefully it ended up there. Yeah, you never know. But the thing is, like, it, it just appalled me. Right. You know, it made me feel so, so sick. But right. Anyway, that kind of thing happens. So We didn't mean to talk about that so long. Uh, no. Dim, can you roll yeah. the media? Yeah, let's, let's continue. Keep Sorry going. about that. <clears throat> So yeah, yeah, these are the achievements. You had the Olympics, which was a huge deal for them. You have all the minority kids there. Getting it was. Along. Look, it was, a, it, was, it was the time for China to come onto the world stage. Sure. You know? Right. Um, and now they're showing their military. Why do kids care about this? <laughs> I don't know. It's like, look, they're we, forced to. Look, we managed to sneak the secrets of the J-35 fighter out from America and built our own one. Yay. Ooh, you said that very, <laughs> very quietly. Yeah, I did. Didn't. Uh, anyway. Remember when the whole Huawei thing kind of broke? Yeah. And... Uh, Canada arrested the CFO, is it? Yeah. yeah of uh, Huawei. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Meng. Princess, Princess Meng. Princess yeah. Aww. Anyway, Zhong Guo Meng. So what happened was, in like retaliation, almost immediately, um, this propaganda song for Huawei suddenly appeared. Right. So let's uh, let's play a little bit of it. <laughs> this crap is stuck in our head. I All wonder if people time. that don't speak Chinese are going to be as appalled. Um, yeah. We'll explain it though. Okay. Audio is cut. Yeah. Um, so basically, what you're seeing is this is. We, we picked two clips that represent children. This is the mobilization of, of children, children for China's propaganda purpose. Propaganda tool, yeah. yeah. Um, you can explain, like, what's going on here. Well, little kids all dressed in T-shirts that say China on yeah. them, like in a traditional script, and they're like, which is the most beautiful phone in the world? Which has the best signal? Which is the most high-tech? It's Huawei. Yeah, it's Huawei. And then Huawei how? It means Huawei is good. good. And Huawei may. Huawei, Huawei is beautiful. beautiful. Um, anyway, the thing is... After this was released, um, you know, at first it was put out there as an official sort of a, a government-backed sort of thing, but then it got a lot of flack from, from international yeah, press. Well, not only international, but local too. Yeah, Weibo, right? And so then they, the company Huawei distanced themselves from it. So, they were oh, like, no, we didn't, was, we didn't do that. It was, it was an independent company that sure. made this by themselves. Meanwhile, right. they obviously paid a company to do this. Like, you know. When this dropped... Mm. My favorite aspect was that the whole rhetoric, the whole thing that Huawei. Why has a kid got a, an assault I, rifle? It, did you have to ask that? You know? It's China, dude. Yeah, anyway, Come on. sorry. Um, the whole thing was they were saying that no, let Huawei five G into your country and Huawei products into your country because we have nothing to do with the PLA and nothing to do with the government. And they then tried to, <laughs> and then they make this. Yeah, which is a government back. It says with, China. Yeah. And our country is the best, and we have the best phones, which is Huawei. Yeah, and then it's you got, link yeah, them. exactly. You link them together. <laughs> With children in a PLA uniform and an assault rifle. You, did you ever find it super creepy with this kind of stuff? Like any performance that they always put makeup on the kids? Oh, yeah, on top of that, they dub everything as well. Yeah. Have you noticed they yeah. obviously have bad microphones or something? They had camera as well. Yeah. What is this, 144p? Yeah, well, come on, we downloaded this off Weibo. So yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. But yeah, it's it's kind of it's cringy it's got the worst catchy tune ever um and it just shows it's you it's poison yeah. in your ears and now, you'll oh. um can you just pause it in a second yeah okay the next thing is we'd actually that this this is a clip that uh, we found a little while ago uh -huh. um we've shown it before and yeah. some of our other stuff but this is actually um what results okay this is one of the, the things that kind of uh, this all leads to um no let's just play the clip and then we'll talk about it Let's just enjoy these credits. Yeah. It's a lot of people involved. Yes, hell of a lot of people. We could have done a better job shooting that. Yeah. Drone shots. Yeah, yeah. drone shots of the kids. Check this out, Sounds right? Bad. Okay, can you pause it there? Okay, so um, for those of you at home, mm -hmm. what you're seeing here is there's a big sort of a billboard behind these kids and mm -hmm. it says happy children's day yeah and the children are um <laughs> yeah get a yeah. Good freeze frame on that yeah the, what's happening is there's a young girl she has a luger style pistol <laughs> yeah she mows down a bunch of japanese soldiers kills them all right. and runs off grabs the chinese flag and lifts it in the air in mm -hmm. this triumphant sort of thing with mm -hmm. the chinese national anthem playing behind it right now you might think this is a little weird and extreme and out of the ordinary, but it's actually quite common. Are, are you trying to say that when you were in kindergarten, you didn't have a play where you just shot a bunch of Soviets? No. Oh, weird. Neither did I. Yeah, no, we didn't. Huh, interesting. Yeah. Actually, this is incredibly common because I did, I taught kindergarten for about a year, uh -huh. you know, in the beginning and right. when I first got to China. And well, they have the typical flag raising every morning with the, you know, national anthem and they do all that stuff. It's kind of normal. Um, but they have every time there's like a play and some excuse to do a play, 
they'll do like some kind of traditional dance thing you know they'll Little flags yeah, and, yeah they'll they'll do like some nice chinese cultural stuff but there's always somewhere in there there's some kind of military themed thing where they're killing japanese people mm. these kids by the way are like four, four five yeah maybe kindergartners why are you teaching children to shoot and kill people? <laughs> nice free stream, yeah. Yeah, yeah. These go. and especially the poor kids that had to play the Japanese people. You think yeah. they like they actually delineated a line in their mind? They're like, no, you are now Japanese people. Yeah, it's it's not it's not good. But you know, this is so entrenched in Chinese um, society because not only do they have those shows on every yeah. single day. I remember I went to the Tencent Christmas party. You know, Tencent yeah, is yeah. the people who make WeChat, and yeah. they're like the biggest internet company, you know, other than Google in yeah. the world. And for their Christmas gala, they rented out this massive stadium. They actually had uh, Wang Feng there, oh, you know, singing his dude, songs, yeah. which was Singer. awesome. Mm. I actually really enjoyed that. Um, you know, and they always get big stars to come in there because they're the most, you know, famous company sure. in China. One of their big centerpiece performances was this. Exactly the same. They really? had a bunch of the Tencent staff, I guess, managers or something decided to put on a play. So they all dressed up like, you know, like the communists right. and they got the Japanese to run on the stage and they all shot him with fake rifles and stuff and did a whole big play like this. Uh -huh. So this is a big international company basically for their big gala condoning murder, you know, <laughs> murdering people as a play right. on stage. Sure. You know, I mean, I guess you see it every day on TV, so it's got to be okay, right? Yeah, I just, I my only issue with this is that to bring it back to this whole brainwash thing, they bring these kids to the mm -hmm. Japanese War Museum, right? And yeah. let's be honest, Japan effed up big time. Of they course. were disgusting. Yes, we're not making excuses for Holy them. Holy <laughs> Lord, the atrocities were, yeah. it's unparalleled. Yeah. But that being said, you don't take a four and five year old to these museums to see people flayed and stabbing babies and all this kind of stuff. In, You're putting poisonous images yeah, in their brain. In fact, let's go over to the pictures, okay? Let's, this since we're talking about it you've got these theme parks in china okay where they have these like reenactments of the japanese coming in and killing a bunch of people right mm. so they'll do these live action plays kind of like if you go to tombstone and every day you see the showdown yeah. at the ok corral right. you know that kind of thing um the difference here is though that they of course it's all flipped on its head and it's like historical fantasy so you'll have some japanese come and shoot some people but then like the some farmer peasants will come and like murder right. all the Japanese. It's going to be like a this crazy thing. Top. But these theme parks allow you to do things like stab straw straw men in uh, like Japanese costumes with a bayonet and all this. And can we go to the next picture? You, kids get to like dress up and shoot Japanese people with fake guns. And my my personal experience is when I went on that um, aircraft carrier that's now in the ocean. Yeah. Um, remember that was in uh, the Minsk, it was in Shenzhen. Yes. I took all my students there. Yeah. And the first thing you can do is pay like, I think it was like one RMB, and you can shoot with an air gun. There's balloons yeah. all over the body of these uh, American soldiers, but it's the typical like hook nose, like <laughs> he's drooling and like gold gristled and stuff. Yeah, so it's yeah. not just Japanese. Yeah, of course. Um, anyway, so you get to uh, shoot Japanese mm. people acting to be Japanese. Let's go to the next one. You get to ride on vehicles and shoot Japanese people. It's right. a big thing. Now, this relates to me, okay? And I've got to tell you why. Um, years ago, probably 2007, 2008, thereabouts, I decided to do this crazy thing, which was to cycle on a bicycle from Shenzhen to Zhuhai. Mm. It, it was a 12-hour thing. Totally. It was ridiculous in the heat of summer. I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, I was starting to get sunstroke. I had a massive like tan on the back of my neck, sure. as you do. So I put my hand handkerchief underneath my hat. Uh, if we go to the next picture. So that's me right. during the cycling trip. You look like a dirty Japanese soldier. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Cause when you go back to the first picture, if you actually look at the Japanese soldiers, they're, yeah. they're military hats. It's like a cap with, you know, sort of a cloth over mm. the neck in order to stop sunstroke. So let's go back to me. See, I kind of look, I suppose, yeah, I mean marginally. like a Japanese soldier type thing right. anyway i was just cycling through some random rural area and children <laughs> were throwing stones at me <laughs> shouting you know japanese which means little, little japanese, japanese ghost and throwing stones <laughs> at me okay do you understand how this hatred has right i'm talking about right. little kids that are like four five six sure. like those d grubby kids on the side right. of the road right. picking up stones and throwing it at this random dude riding past on a bicycle I guess the most alarming thing for me is the mm -hmm. fact that those kids at that age had it's been they've been force fed this stuff so much that their initial instinct was to chuck rocks at you. Yeah. Like they didn't yeah. have any other perspective. Like, we gotta take this guy down. Yeah, we've gotta throw rocks at yeah. and I was just like, What are you doing? You know? I'm first of all, I'm not Japanese, but even if I was, you're a rude little shit throwing a rock. <laughs> 
You know, do you want me to throw they, a rock back at you? I'll throw a freaking boulder. <laughs> okay? Yeah, you can be <laughs> I'll like... throw you. <laughs> I mean, it just shows you that this sure. actually has real it world and it's not repercussions. The kids no, of course. It's because they've been fed all this hatred. Right. You know? And it starts young, for yeah. sure. So this guy's just painting the pig black so he can sell it for a lot more at market. Let's move on to some more hammy, hammy humor. Okay. <laughs> Wow, they're going for it, aren't they? Some of his clothes were thrown out, out the window. A lot of them were cut up. Some of them were burned. She was too crazy. She lunged at him with a knife. She was in this jealous rage. If you don't go home now, I'm gonna walk out into traffic and kill myself.